Hello friends, welcome to the heat transfer phenomena in the polymeric system. This is the new chapter which we are going to start under the edges of uh, polymer process engineering. So this is the introductory chapter and because uh, the heat transfer plays a very vital role in all kind of the processing operation of uh, polymeric systems or polymers. So its uh, um, study or its awareness or its knowledge is quite essential for further study of this uh, particular segment of polymer process engineering. Now here are the topics which we are going to cover in this particular aspect. Introduction, we have a small amount of introduction and then heat as a trans energy transfer, then internal and latent heat. We'll discuss about the specific heat and different modes of heat transfer. Some of you may are aware about the heat transfer, different modes of the heat transfer, but for the generic term, it's my duty to have an introduction about the modes of heat transfer, then conduction, convection and radiation heat transfer. So the fundamental of uh, heat transfer, the heat, what is heat? Heat is energy transferred from one object uh, to another because of the difference in temperature. Now remember that the temperature of a gas is a measure of the kinetic energy of the molecule. Now here see, you can experience the cup gets cooler while hand uh, gets warmer. So there is a significant quantum of energy being transferred to your, your hand. So this energy is being extracted from this cup and it transferred to your palm. So this becomes more warmer and this becomes more cold. Now similarly, ice gets warmer while hand gets cooler because your hand is more warmer than this ice. So ice attracts or extracts uh, uh, um, heat from your palm, so it becomes cooler and it gets warmer. So um, when we talk about this energy or heat, then obviously in a scientific term, there is a question that what should be the unit. So unit of heat is referred as a calorie. This means a calorie is the amount of heat necessary to raise the temperature of uh, 1 gram of a water by 1 degree Celsius. So Usually, one calorie is referred as 1.186 joule. Heat is always from the warmer to cooler objects like we, we saw in this uh, particular figure. So, the summation of uh, uh, all energy of all molecules in the substance is its internal energy. And this is the new segment of which we are going to start, the internal energy. Because some of, the, if you supply the heat to any object, some of the energy being consumed to raise the internal energy and thereafter the molecules are available for the work. So internal energy uh, of, uh, of an idol or atomic gas is equal to the average kinetic energy per molecule multiplied by the number of molecules. But since we know the average kinetic energy in terms of a temperature. So we can write the internal energy of mon ideal monoatomic gas U this is equal to 3 upon 2 uh, nRT. N is number of moles of gases. R is the universal gas constant and it is referred as 8.314 joule per mole Kelvin and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Now let us have a brief outlook about the specific heat. This is the amount of heat required to change the temperature of a material. This is proportional to the mass and the temperature change. Now this is Q is proportional to M and delta T, where delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So that is of any body, it is represented either in Kelvin or degree Celsius and the Q, this heat is in, in joule and m is the mass that is in kg and delta t is the change in temperature. So for mechanically reversible system working at constant uh, pressure, the heat can be calculated as q. q is equal to m c p delta t where c p is the specific heat at constant pressure and the units are joule per kilogram kelvin. Now, a specific heat which is usually represented by C is the characteristics of a material. So different values which are important in due course of a study, they are enlisted over here. So specific heats of solid and liquids for one atom and 20 degrees Celsius for different substances, <coughs> the aluminum, 
हंड्रेड जूल पर किलोग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस देन और इफ वी विश टू रिप्रेजेंट इन से किलोग्राम पर ग्राम सॉरी कैलोरीज पर ग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस इट इज जीरो पॉइंट टू टू एन द कॉपर थ्री नाइन्टी एंड जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन थ्री कैलोरीज पर ग्राम कैलविन एंड द ग्लास हैविंग एट फोर्टी एंड द सी पी वैल्यू इन कैलोरीज पर ग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस इज जीरो पॉइंट टू जीरो वाटर बिकॉज वाटर इज अवेलेबल इन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स आइस लिक्विड स्टीम सो एट माइनस फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस इट इज हैविंग द स्पेसिफिक हीट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड जूल्स पर किलोग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ कैलोरी इट इज पॉइंट फाइव कैलोरी पर ग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड इफ यू टेक द लिक्विड वाटर फिफ्टीन डिग्री सेल्सियस इट इज कम्स आउट टू बी फोर थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड एट्टी सिक्स जूल पर कैलोरी किलोग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड वन कैलोरी पर ग्राम डिग्री सेल्सियस If we talk about in other units, in steam, if we talk about 110 degree Celsius, it is 2010 joule per kilogram degree Celsius and 0.48 calories per gram degree Celsius. So the specific heat of gases are more complicated and are generally measured as constant pressure or constant volume. So uh, this uh, this table represents the uh, specific heat of the gases in kilocalorie per kilogram degree Celsius for some of the common gases, and uh, the the specific heat is represented in the constant pressure and the constant volume both. So oxygen, the Cp is point two one eight, whereas the Cv is point one five five, and helium. 1.15 the cp and cv is 0.75 and the carbon dioxide 0.199 and cv is uh, 0.153 and the nitrogen 0.248 and 0.177 is the cv value now latent heat is again very important phenomena this is the energy required for a material to change phase even though its temperature is not changing now here you see the best example of a water here we are having the ice and if we raise the temp the temperature by adding the heat now you see that after some time at 0 degree celsius the the temperature is constant but the heat is more that is water and ice then after 100 100 kilo calorie it converts all the water into the liquid and then if we raise the temperature to 100 degree celsius the you may have a water and a steam and if you raise further the temperature then the water you may get the water vapors this the steam saturated steam and then superheated steam all this by giving more and more amount of heat in kilo calories sometimes some of the 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 nomenclatures are of use like heat of fusion it is sometimes referred as lf this is the heat required to change the 1 kg of material from solid to liquid then heat of vaporization referred as lv the heat required to change 1 kg of material from liquid to vapor the latent heat of vaporization is relevant for evaporation as well as boiling the heat of vaporization of water rises slightly as the temperature decreases now on a molecular level the heat added during the a change of state uh, does not go to increase the the kinetic energy of individual molecules but rather to break the close bonds between them so the next phase can occur now here you see that latent heat at one atmosphere of a different substances oxygen nitrogen uh, ammonia water lead iron etc now here you see the melting point like oxygen they are, they are having the melting point of minus 218.8 degree celsius and the heat of fusion kilo joule per kilogram 14 and kilo calorie if we convert into the kilo calorie per kilogram so it is comes out to be 3.3 and the boiling point in uh, is around minus 18.3 degree celsius and the heat of a vaporization is 210 kilo joule per kilogram and 81 kilo calorie per kilogram similarly if you see the water because water is referred as the reference material in some some or other way 
So, water the melting point is 0 because at 1 atmosphere we are taking it and the heat of fusion is 333 uh, kilojoule per kilogram and the boiling point is 100 degree Celsius with the heat of a vaporization of 2260 kilojoule per kilogram or 59, 539 kilocalorie per kilogram. Similarly, if we take uh, iron, the iron melting point is 1538, whereas the heat of fusion is 289 kilojoule per kilogram and kilocalorie per, uh, per kilogram if we talk about in this particular aspect, it comes out to be 69.1. And boiling point of uh, iron is 3023 degree Celsius, whereas the heat, heat of vaporization 6340 kilojoule per kilogram. And if we convert it into the kilocalorie, it comes out to be 1520 kilocalorie per kilogram. Now, let us talk about the thermodynamics and the heat transfer. Now, using the principle of thermodynamics, we can study the interaction of a system with its surrounding. Now, these interactions are in the form of a heat and a work. However, there is a something missing. None of the thermodynamic relations have time in them and they do not contain any information about how these interactions are taking place. So, to support these things, there are various laws, right from the zeroth law to the first law of thermodynamics to the second law of thermodynamics to the third law of thermodynamics. So, the science of thermodynamics, it deals with the amount of heat transfer or work done for the system and that is undergoing a process from one state to the other and it does not care about how long the process takes. So, here you see uh, you, are, you are applying the heat to the system and you are extracting the work. So, the, from surrounding to this is the system and this is the surrounding. So, anything that it comes to the system from, uh, from surrounding and you are extracting the work to the surrounding. But in engineering, we are often interested in the rate of heat transfer and the means with uh, which we can make it happen. And this is the focus on this particular lecture. So, let us start it. Let us start with the heat transfer. Now, simply, now simply put the heat transfer is the thermal energy in transit due to the temperature difference. If there is a temperature difference in a medium or between the different media, heat transfer definitely will occur. The transfer of energy as heat is always from higher temperature medium to the lower temperature medium and this transfer stops when the two media reach at the same temperature. Now, this uh, is state of art known as the thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, here you see this is the heat surface and this is the, now this is here both the segments are having the same temperature and that is called the thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, simply if we put uh, the heat transfer, this is a thermal energy in transit due to the temperature difference. If there is a temperature difference in a medium or between the different media, heat transfer definitely will occur. So, the transfer of energy as a heat always from higher temperature medium to the lower temperature. Now, here you see that the medium 1, medium 2, medium 3 all these. So, so at the interface you will see that T1 is equal to T2 and T2 is equal to T3. This is known as the thermodynamic equilibrium. Now, heat transfer is the phenomena which keeps our car engine from overheating. It is what keeps our home warm during the cold winter and cold during the hot summer. The heat transfer helps our food and drinks cool and fresh. It helps power cities and keeps our electronics cool and running. Now, this transfer of thermal energy can occur in three different ways. Uh, it can happen via conduction, convection and radiation. Let us go to the modes of heat transfer, the convection. The transfer of heat through a fluid, liquid or gas through a molecular motion. The conduction, the transfer of heat or electric currents from one substance to another by direct contact. And the radiation, the energy that is radiated or transmitted in the form of a rays or waves or particles. Now, conduction, 
the conduction is the transfer of thermal energy through a medium without any flow of the medium. The particles are heated the, and vibrated vigorously. The, they collide with the neighboring particles and transfer their energy to them and eventually the particles at the cooler end are also set into the, the vigorous vibration. Like here you see, this is a transfer. The, the conduction, the heat from the source are causing the atoms of the solid to vibrate and gain kinetic energy and these uh, atoms cause uh, neighboring atom to vibrate and kinetic energy is transferred from one atom to the next. The heat energy is conducted through a solid in this way and as the, autom the, as the atoms of the solid gains, gain kinetic energy, the temperature of the solid increases. Now here you see you are supplying the heat and it goes to the atom. These are energized and vibration increases and these atoms are energized and it goes to the, the wall. So it passes through the wall. Let us talk about the conduction in metal. In all solid thermal energy is transferred through the vibration and collision of the particles. However, in metals, due to the presence of free electron, thermal energy is also spread through electron diffusion. The electrons gain kinetic energy and move more rapidly. They collide with atoms in a cooler part of the metal and pass on their energy in that particular process. Here you can see, you can, you can visualize. Uh, conduction in liquid and gases, again a very important phenomena. So, so, the particle in the liquid and gases are spaced farther apart from these solid because solid is more compact in nature and the collision between the particles occur less frequently and the slow transfer of kinetic energy. So, you, you see that here the ice cube wrapped in the wire gauge and uh, you are supplying uh, the flame and over the period of time it gets melted. Now let us talk about the conduction in polymers. The polymers that are used in daily basis are insulators sometimes and however some polymers can conduct electricity under certain conditions. Therefore, there are some mechanisms through which the electrons can be made available in organic molecules. Now here you see the whenever uh, there are various reasons and various aspects of the polymer. The, the, you, know, you see that in the first chapter we discussed about the polymeric chains. So the polymer chains they are entangled and all together and uh, the chain ends they are openly exposed and some sort may have the crystalline reason and some sort they may have amorphous reason. Apart from this, there are certain voids. So, if you supply the heat, the chains try to unentangle themselves and they try to align and this, this is the conduction in the polymers. So, prevalent defects and structural disorder in the polymer they act as a scattering site for the heat carriers which lead to a low thermal conductivity and usually this is in the order of 0.2 to 0.4 watt per meter Kelvin. Uh, for example, the polymer chain entanglement chain ends the crystal amorphous interface and voids hinder the efficient thermal transport. Now conduction occurs uh, due to the conjugated carbon chain consists of alternate uh, single and double bond where the highly delocalized, polarized and electron dense pi bonds are responsible for the electrical and optical behavior. So, the fact that uh, common polymers like polyethylene, they are composed of backbones of covalent carbon-carbon bonds and such as semi-crystalline polyethylene. Now, these backbone feature a uh, randomly oriented lamellar crystalline or lamellae and they dispersed in amorphous chain network like here you see. Now atomistic uh, simulations they have suggested that an individual crystalline polyethylene chain can have a very high possible divergent thermal conductivity. Now when we are talking about the conduction in polymers then we must see that the classification of conductive polymers because they are clubbed under the head of conductive polymers. Now, there are several different classification of the thermally conductive polymers. 
Now, according to different criteria which is shown in the figure like thermally conducting polymers, symmetry of structure again they are subdivided into the isotropic thermally conductive polymers or anisotropic thermally conductive polymers. Then we are having the composition of the material, they are the homogeneous atoms or heterogeneous matter. Then preparation methods based on the preparation method you can classify them like intrinsic thermally conductive polymers then in extrinsic thermally conductive polymers. So, all these things are there. Now, let us uh, talk about uh, the, the conducting polymers preparation methods. So, intrinsically conducting polymers and sometimes they are referred as ICPs, they are organic polymers that conduct electricity and such compounds may have a metallic conductivity or can be a semiconductor. The biggest advantage of conducting polymers is their processability mainly by the dispersion. Here you see that one of the, the conducting polymers. Now, conducting polymers, they have the backbones of the continuous sp2 hybridized car, uh, carbon center. So, one valence electron on each center resides in a p or pz orbital which is orthogonal to the other three sigma bonds and the electron in these delocalized orbitals have high mobility. Now, extrinsically conducting polymers, ECPs those conducting polymers which owe their conductivity due to the presence of externally added ingredients in them, they are called extrinsically conducting polymers. And they are of two types, one is the conducting element filled polymers CEFP and second one is the blended conducting polymer BCP. Let us take example, in high density polyethylene HDP, this is filled with the aluminum nitrite. AIN filler and AIN filler can touch and interact with each other to form the AIN AIN thermally conductive network and channels and finally improve the lambda value of HDPE matrix. Let us talk about the different types of intrinsically conducting polymers. The different intrinsically conducting polymers, they are classified in two ways. One is the intrinsically conducting polymers and extrinsically conducting polymers and intrinsically conducting polymers, the conjugated conducting polymers and doped conducting polymers. These are the two categories for this set. And again, the extrinsically conducting polymers have two subcategories, polymers with conducting elements and polymers with conducting blends. Let us talk about the conjugated conducting polymers. Now, in these type of polymers, due to the presence of double bond and a lone pair of electron conduction of electricity takes place. Due to overlapping of a conjugated pi electrons, valence and conduction band throughout the backbone of the polymers, they are developed. Thermal conduction usually this can occur only after attainment of required energy of activation either thermally or photochemically because there is some gap between the valence and conduction bands. So, the electron need to be excited by some means, this is quite essential. And now, polyacetylene and polyaniline etcetera, these are the type, different type of the conducting polymers. Let us talk about the doped conducting polymers. The conduction power of the semiconductor can be enhanced by adding some foreign material or desired impurities. These impurities are called the doping agent or dopant. The appropriate doping agent uh, increases the conductivity of semiconductor up to 104 times. Now, the increase in the conduction is due to participation of impurity elements in between the valence band and the conduction band and thus making a bridge through which the electrons can jump easily from the valence band to the conduction band. Now, doping usually are mainly two types, the P type doping through the oxidation of material and N type doping through the reduction of materials. Now, let us talk about uh, the doped conducting polymers and P type doping. Now, the P type doping through oxidation of the material in uh, here you see that this is uh, the P type doping. Now, in this type of a doping, some electrons from the conjugated pi bonds are removed through oxidation creating a positive hole called the, the polaron inside the polymer and the positive hole or polaron can move throughout the polymeric chain and make it 
conducting polymer. The polymer which have the conjugation in the backbone when treated with the electron deficient series and Lewis acid like FeCl3 or I2 vapor or I2 or, um, or CCl4 oxidation takes place and a positive charge is created in the molecule. Now, the removal of one electron in the pi backbone of a conjugated polymer forms a radical cation that is called the polaron, which on losing another electron forms bipolaron. Now, the, the delocalization of the positive charges causes the electrical conduction. Lewis acid that is FeCl3 or AlCl3, they are generally used as a doping agent. Now, here you see the polymer, you are having the polymer plus any Lewis acid, you can get the P-doped polymer or oxidative coupling like polyacetylene CHX plus 3I2, it is 2CHXI3 or polyacetylene CHX plus 2FeCl3, it gives the CHX and FeCl4 and plus FeCl2. Now, let us talk about uh, the N-type doping. Now, N-type doping through the reduction of material, in this type of a doping, some electrons are introduced to the conjugated pi bonds through reduction creating a negative hole or charge inside the polymer. The negative hole or charge can move throughout the polymeric chain and make it to conducting polymer. So, the here we are using the Lewis basis like NaC10H8, KC10H8, etc. They are generally used as a doping agent. When Lewis bases, these are the electron rich species are treated with the polymer having conjugation and due to the reduction of the polymer negative charge develops. Actually, I uh, see by the addition of uh, one electron polaron and by the addition of the second electron bipolaron, they are formed. In bipolaron, and uh, due to the delocalization of charge, conduction takes place. Like here you see this uh, polyacetylene sodium naphthalide, they react with to form the n doped polyacetylene and naphthalene. Now, let us talk about the types of extrinsically conducting polymers, the conducting elements filled polymers. CEFP. In this type of uh, a conducting poly element is added to the polymer. Therefore, the polymer acts as a binder to hold the conducting element together in the solid entry. There we are creating um, the, the charge in the polymer. Here we are introduce, introducing a foreign body to carry out this to make this uh, system conducting. Thus, conductivity of these polymer is due to the addition of external ingredients. So, upon addition of the conducting element, the polymer will have a property of that conducting element and it will start conducting electricity. So, there are various uh, characteristics of uh, CEFP uh, polymers. They possess a good bulk uh, conductivity, they are cheaper, light in weight, mechanically durable and strong, easily processable in different form, shape and sizes. Now, let us talk about uh, the blended conducting polymers. Now, these type of polymers are obtained by blending a conventional polymer with a conducting polymer either physically or chemically. The blend of polymer conduct electricity and such polymers can be easily processed and possess better physical, chemical and mechanical properties. So, there are some of the important characteristics of these polymers. They are light in weight, mechanically durable and strong, easily processable in different form and shapes. There are, let us take some example of the thermally conducting polymers like high density polyethylene HDPE. They are having the thermal conductivity of 0 0.44 then the polybutylene terphthalate PBT 0.29, polyethylene uh, polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE 0.27, polycarbonate uh, 0.2, polyvinyl chloride PVC 0.19, polystyrene 0.14, polypropylene 0.12 and polyethylene that is 0.11. So, let us talk about the convection. This is the process in which the heat energy is transferred from one system to another system due to the movement of the particles, where we are not having the movement of the particles, but here we are having the movement of the particle through the large distance. This is called the 
convection. So hot material rises because it is less dense and it starts to cool spread out and start to cool as it cools it becomes more and more denser and sink again. So this is the convection phenomena. Let us talk about the convection in liquid. So when water at the bottom of a flask is heated here, it expands. The expanded water is less dense than the surrounding of the water and rises since the upper region is cooler. The, here this is the cooler region. Uh, cooler, it, it is denser and therefore sinks. The difference in the densities of the water in the different regions sets up a convective current. Now this uh, you can see over here, this is, uh, uh, this is the purple line, this is streams rising from the bottom and sinking this side. So hot lens, uh, uh, dense water rises. Similarly, if we talk about the convection in gases, when the, the air above the candle usually is heated, it expands. The expanded air is less dense than the surrounding air and rises out of the chimney here. Since the surrounding air is cooler, it is denser, therefore it sinks into a chimney and the difference in the densities of the air at the different chimneys set up a convective current. There are some of the examples of convection, ventilators. Ventilators are provided in the walls of a room near the ceiling which help to keep the room temperature moderate by continuous circulation of air. The air inside the room gets impure and heated due to our breathing and the hot air rises up and passes out of the ventilators and allowing a space for current to a fresh air from outside. So it creates a circulating um, media land sea breeze. The sea breeze that in the day the land heats up faster than sea, the air above land is uh, heated, expand and rises and cool air above the sea is denser and moves up to the replace the warmer air and that, sub, uh, that set up the sea breeze. Like here you see the sea breeze. The land breeze. At night, the land cools faster than the sea. The air above the land is now cooler and the, uh, than the air above the sea. The convective current is set up in the opposite direction and that is called the land breeze. Now, let us talk about uh, the radiation. The process in which the, the heat energy travels from one system to another in the form of electromagnetic waves with no need of any kind of a material medium that is called the radiation. So all bodies emit infrared radiation and infrared radiation does not require a medium to be transmitted. This is how the earth is warmed by the sun. Now effect of color and texture sometimes take place in the emission rate. The four containers here you see. They are filled with warm water. Which container would have the warmest water after 10 minutes? The shiny material container would be the warmest after 10, 10, 10 minutes because its shiny surface reflects the heat radiation back into the container so less is the loss. The dull back, this one container would be the coolest because it is the best at emitting heat radiation. Now the effect other factors uh, with those who affects the emission or absorption rate, one is the surface area. For two objects, the identical mass and material, the object with the larger surface area will emit or absorb infrared radiation at a higher rate. And the surface temperature, the higher the temperature of an object relative to the surrounding temperature, the higher the rate of emission of infrared radiation. Some of the examples, let us take some of the example. The atmosphere would be the basic example. The atmosphere is heated by radiation from the sun. The atmosphere exhibits the convection as a hot air near the equator, rises producing the winds and finally there is a conduction between the air molecules and a small amount of air land conduction. A good example would be the heating a tin can of water using the Bunsen burner. Initially, the frame produces the radiation which heats the tin can. The tin can then transfer the heat to the water through the conduction and the hot water then rise to the top in the convection process. Now, differential air 
the thermoscope the thermoscope is usually a device for detecting and displaying the temperature changes and it is very essential when we talk about the polymer processing where melting etc is important now it consists of identical glass bulbs a a and b here you see which are connected to the a narrow u shaped glass tube the tube is filled with the sulfuric acid and space above the acid level and the both arm is filled with air now bulb a is cooled with the lamp black so that it may completely absorb the heat radiation uh, falling on it when the temperature of the two bulbs is same there is no difference in the acid level when the a is bulb a is exposed to heat it absorbs heat and air in this arm expand resulting in the difference of acid level boys radiometer this is a combination of a moving coil galvanometer and a thermocouple it consists of a single loop of a silver or copper wire here this is this one the lower ends of the wire they are soldered um, to a copper disc which is coated with a lamp black so when disc is exposed to the heat radiation a thermo electric current is produced in the couple made of bismuth and antimony and begins to flow in a wire a Hence, we get a current in the galvanometer and the deflection shows the amount of radiation. So, dear friends, in this uh, uh, particular segment, we discussed uh, about the different type of uh, heat transfer and basically the fundamental of heat transfer and different modes of heat transfer with the example and uh, the knowledge about this is quite essential for the further reading in terms of uh, when we discuss about the heat transfer aspect and a heating of all these kind of the polymeric system for your convenience we have enlisted a series of references which can be utilized if you wish to have further reading thank you very much